Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Jim Powell, Executive Director of Graduate Fellowships for STEM Diversity. My associate, Dr. Jaretta Joseph, is on with us and will help answer questions at the end. I'm recording this PowerPoint presentation so that I can put it on our website. Our topic today is how to improve your odds of receiving a National STEM Fellowship. The obvious first question is why you should want to have a STEM PhD in the first place. If you can't answer that, you are not likely to earn one. The benefits are obvious. A PhD is generally required to be a university professor and to work at the highest level in STEM research. Your lifetime earnings will be much higher with a PhD. You will also have the satisfaction and pride in knowing that you have met the highest academic standards. But to earn a STEM PhD will take you on average six to seven years. The financial costs can be at least partially offset by some combination of a national fellowship, a tuition scholarship, and a research or teaching assistantship. When you begin your PhD research, your thesis professor is apt to have a grant that will support you. The point of this is that you should not, at this stage, let an apparent lack of funding stop you from applying to graduate school and for a national fellowship. If you are worthy of earning a PhD, there is a very good chance that someone else will pay for it. But there is something more. The practical benefits listed at the top will likely not be enough to carry you through six to seven years of hard work and a successful career in science. You need something more, and in my opinion that something is scientific curiosity, a desire to learn how and why the world works as it does. This is what will carry you through graduate school and on to a rewarding career in science. The national fellowships that you may be applying for include the NSF Graduate Research Fellowship Program, the National Defense Science and Engineering Grant, our program, and GEM, Graduate Education for Minorities. They are funded entirely or partly by taxpayer dollars. NSF says that the purpose of its program is to support persons who have the potential to be high achieving scientists and to broaden participation of underrepresented groups. Our program has as its mission to increase the number of American citizens with graduate degrees in STEM fields, emphasizing recruitment of a diverse applicant pool. It is implicit in these and similar statements that having a larger, more talented, and more diverse STEM workforce is a good thing. I believe it is for two reasons. First, each human being deserves the opportunity to achieve their highest potential. For some, that will be a career in STEM. Second, national security and quality of life obviously depend heavily on advances in science. These fellowships provide a stipend, a living allowance that you can spend as you need. The stipend will usually be paid through the graduate school financial office so as not to be included in your taxable income. The fellowships cover all or partial tuition and are portable to any research university in the country. The recipient chooses which university to attend, the program of study, and so on. Note that this means that you will apply for the fellowships well before you know which university you will attend for graduate school so the choice of university does not come into the selection. After you receive your PhD, you may work for whomever you like. There is no postdoctoral service requirement. In some cases, you will need a federal security clearance, a good thing to have as it opens up otherwise unavailable job opportunities. If you cannot get a security clearance, that's worth knowing as you may be able to remedy the problem. GFSD has additional benefits. These include two paid summer internships at the sponsor's lab and a mentor who will advise and work with you. 
you would begin a relationship with a world-class science agency, and a number of our graduates have gone on to work for the agency or lab that supported them. Eligibility for these fellowships is restricted to U.S. citizens, nationals, and permanent residents, and applicants should be college seniors or graduate students who have not yet started their thesis research. I'll let you read the rest of this. You apply at the websites shown here. GFSD's closing date is December 15, but for instance, the deadline for the NSF GRFP is October 21. And so you should check these deadlines carefully so you don't miss them. More or less the same information is required by each program, so if you've applied to one, it is relatively easy to apply to one or more of the others. Typically, you would be notified in late March or early April. The application asks for your history, background, and goals. And here's the place to reveal how it is that you came to be interested in a career in science. NSF asks you for a statement describing your proposed research, but our program does not do that because most college seniors cannot be expected to know how to answer that question. I will come back to letters of reference. The graduate record exam is likely to be optional, but again, check the instructions for the particular fellowship you are applying for. Some applications require you to make a statement that has to do with diversity in STEM fields. You should show that you have thought about that issue, its importance, and what can be done about it. In a nutshell, these programs are looking for a demonstrated aptitude for research. That should emerge from your application and is more important than your GPA. You can show that aptitude through describing your undergraduate research experiences, working with one of your professors, a summer internship at a national or corporate science lab, undergraduate research courses, an honors thesis, and so on. Describe what got you interested in science and led you to want to have science as your career. It might have begun with a high school science fair project. If so, how did you follow it up? Scientists that I have known, including me, can look back to some person or some event that tipped them toward science. I have directed a couple of large science museums, and I've had many scientists tell me that a science museum first sparked their interest in science. Whatever it is that sparked your interest, make sure that your statement is not generic, but is one that no one but you could have written. Our program is funded directly by government agencies and labs, and we ask you to indicate which of those agencies and labs you would like to intern at, so your application should reflect a knowledge of them. For instance, if you list the National Institutes of Standards and Technology, for you should then say which of their many programs would be of most interest to you. Of course, you should always follow the procedures that make for the best writing. Grammar checking has gotten a lot better, and so use it. Do not use scientific jargon that would only be understood by insiders in the field. Read your first draft aloud to yourself and or use word read aloud. Have someone else whose opinion you trust read and edit your statement. These fellowship programs require you to have at least three letters of reference. These are quite possibly the most influential part of your application and thus they will affect whether and what kind of career you will have in STEM. 
These letters are important. Do not be the least shy or embarrassed about asking a busy professor to provide you with a reference. It's part of their job description, something that they ought to enjoy doing for a good student. The key is not to have a reference from someone who did not enjoy writing about you. To determine that, you need to ask for the letter in person, if at all possible. I recommend making eye contact and asking, Professor, would you be able to write me a strong letter of recommendation? If the professor seems in any way hesitant, say thanks, and that you will get back to him or her if you need their letter. Actually, you will be doing the professor a favor, as nothing is more tedious than trying to write a letter for a student you are not enthusiastic about. That kind of letter will do you no good and waste everyone's time. Also, be sure not to ask anyone who knows only that you were in his or her class and that you got a certain grade. That information is in your transcript and adds nothing, or perhaps worse than nothing. It implies that you had to ask for a reference from someone who does not know you. Finally, at if at all possible, make sure that at least one of your letters comes from someone who has seen your work in a research lab. Remember, the key is demonstrated aptitude in research. Then finally, look over your entire application. If all seems in order, press the Submit button. I wish you all the best in receiving a STEM fellowship and going on to a great career in science. We need you.